86 countries that don't have an extradition treaty with the U.S. They also don't have an extradition treaty with a lot of other countries also. Uh, some of these countries you would not want to actually move to. There's just a lot of uh, problems of corruption, uh, areas that you just would not want to go to. But there are some countries in here that um, have some really good benefits. And, and let me tell you the reason you really should take a strong look at some of these countries is um, typically when you get citizenship with a country, you're protected as far as extradition goes, uh, assuming if it's a fast track program that you didn't allow the citizenship applications to begin with. Now, that's why you want to get the citizenship and passport before you have some sort of legal you know, trouble. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the ones. I'm not going to go through all 86 of them because there's so many here listed because some of them are what I call junk countries. Uh, you probably would not want to live there, but there are some on this list that you ought to take a strong look at, and I'll tell you why. We get quite a few people that call it have background issues. Okay, They, they wait until the last minute until they got a problem before they contact us. That's not the time to do it. But there are some countries here that will take you. Okay, It just depends on what your situation is. Also, folks, if you want to legally get around high income taxes and how to get a second passport, as quick as 45 days, two, three things. Hit the subscribe button on the right of your screen right here, and you get new videos automatically as they come out. And number two is I would like to hear from you. If you've got a question or comment, put it below. And number three is go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com, and just ask for some help. Okay, now, uh, these countries I'm going to give you, some of them have uh, actually either little to no taxes, okay? But the reason I'm, I'm bringing these out to you, if you go with a fast track program like St. Kitts, for instance, you get the passport. Typically, you're protected with St. Kitts once you get the passport because most countries uh, protect their citizens from being extradited. Now, but it will take you years to get a passport if you don't go with the fast track program. So let's say you get a St. Kitts passport, you get it quick. But then you move to another country and let's say something comes up. You don't even have a problem now, but let's say something comes up later and you have a problem with this country that you left, okay? It can be the U.S., it can be some other country in Europe or whatever, and you want some sort of protection where you know you can't get extradited if it's a, let's say you're going there for residency purposes, you don't have the citizenship, then you better be picking a country that has uh, that offers residency, but you don't have to be a citizen not to be uh, extradited. In other words, you want to make sure you're not going to be extradited back to that other country you got a problem with, okay? So you want to pick a country... Maybe it's going to take years to get citizenship, but due to the fact that they don't have an extradition treaty with the U.S. and many other countries, just getting residency there will protect you. Okay, now, I'm not going to go through all of these countries. There's too many of them here. I'm going to go through the ones that I call that are livable, that have good taxes. And at the very end, I'm actually going to explain one of the countries uh, that's in Africa. Uh, we've never done a residency by investment uh, uh, talk on this country. And I'm going to add that in on this, okay? Let's look at the, uh, we're going to go down the line here. I'm just going to go through and tell you the ones that either have uh, low taxes, they've got, uh, some of them allow dual citizenship, some don't. Most of these, believe it or not, that uh, if you get a second, if you, uh, uh, if you get a situation where, you know, they don't extradite you, they've got sorry laws on dual citizenship. There are a few on here that do allow dual citizenship. But most of them here don't allow it, which that's a bad news, you know. But I'm going to give you the ones that I feel like are the best. Uh, the first one is Andorra. Now, this is one that's in Europe. Uh, they used to didn't have any income tax. Now they do have, they had a lot of pressure from the EU, and now they've got a real low uh, uh, income tax. Uh, the only problem with Andorra, it, it, in fact, it's in a good location. It's very hard to get there. There's very few, I don't think they even have direct flights uh, going to Andorra. You have to switch to an airport that's close by, uh, but not in Andorra. Now, unless they've started something pretty re recently. Uh, now, Andorra does not allow dual citizenship. This is another problem, okay? So, you know, you would have to relinquish all your other citizenships unless you're just going there to get residency purposes, and that's it. Uh, another one is Bahrain. Now, Bahrain is almost impossible to get citizenship there. Uh, they Once you become a resident there, though, you know, there is no extradition treaty with the U.S., and many other countries too. So this is one big benefit. And, and like I say, the taxes are very low there, but getting the passport and citizenship, very, very difficult. Cambodia is another one. Now, Cambodia, the, the only problem with this country is 
Uh, if you live there, they're going to tax you on your worldwide income. They don't, really don't enforce taxes, but I always tell people, you know, why push the limit? You know, it's, uh, uh, the country is pretty corrupt, and uh, they don't have the resources usually to go after people tax-wise. But I always tell people, if you don't like their tax laws, don't move there and, and you know, pray off their uh, inefficiency and stuff. Just don't go there. You're better off picking another country. Uh, but they do tax worldwide income its residents. And... Um, you would have to, uh, they don't allow dual citizenship if you decide that you want to get the, the second passport. Uh, so that's uh, another one. A lot of these are these countries are in Africa, and I'm skipping a bunch of them. Uh, another good one is Cyprus. And let me tell you what I like about Cyprus. Um, you may or may not want a country in the EU, okay? If you do, this is a great choice. Uh, they, they do have a 17-year um, uh, non-DOM status that you can you can literally live there tax-free as long as you don't bring the money inside the country. They've got pretty high inside taxes, but if you're making your money outside, you're not bringing it in, you can get your taxes pretty close to zero for about 17 years. Okay, But they do allow dual citizenship. This is one good thing about this country that I do like uh, that you don't see with a lot of these. Another one is Georgia. Now, Georgia has a territorial tax system. Uh, they... Uh, they don't allow dual citizenship. That's one problem that you have there. Um, and, you know, Georgia is having some issues that I don't like right now. Uh, they've got this Machiavelli guy that's in prison right now. And uh, uh, it's almost, uh, uh, it, it, I almost wonder if they're going to have a dictator type relationship, uh, and some sort of type person in there that's going to screw the system up. But, uh, right now, this guy's dying in prison, and uh, I think he's in there for unjust causes. Uh, and the EU spent a lot of pressure on him right now because they've applied, you know, they want to get EU membership, and they're basically telling him, you know, if this guy dies in prison, you're going to probably have a tough time getting EU membership. Uh, but it, it is a better choice than a lot of the other ones that I, I've got, you know, on here. Now, one I'd like to bring up is Indonesia. Uh, a lot of people like Indonesia. I'll tell you the things I don't like about Indonesia, though. Uh, they tax you heavily on worldwide income if you live there. Even if you're in Bali, that's part of Indonesia. A lot of people want to go to Bali, and they think, you yeah, know, I can live there tax-free. No, you won't do that. You live there uh, uh, enough during the year, you're going to have to pay taxes on your worldwide income. That's a problem with uh, 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 Indonesia. Uh, it is, it's got a nice climate, but um, uh, it, it doesn't have an uh, extradition treaty with the U.S., uh, but it also doesn't allow dual citizenship, so you would have to relinquish your other passports. And you also have to learn that language, too. Uh, the, one of their languages is Malay, which is uh, like the Malay language in Malaysia. Okay, let's look down the line here. Kuwait's another one. They've got um, uh, real good tax laws there. Very difficult, almost impossible to get citizenship there. Uh, but you would be protected if you go there as far as extradition goes. So that's one thing that's really nice about that. A lot of people like Laos. They've got um, uh, kind of a dictatorship there in, in Laos. Um, and, um, you know, it, it is not a, you would be taxed on your worldwide income if you live there. Uh, so, you know, they don't have, uh, uh, you know, real good uh, uh, tax laws there. Uh, let's go down the, the, the list here a little bit further. Most of these, like I'm just skipping through, just tons of these in Africa. Um, another one would be Oman. Uh, Oman, it's almost impossible to get the passport there. They got Ruga tax laws. Uh, you would have to give up any other passports if you could ever get the passport. It's, it's like the UAE. It's almost impossible to get the passport there. So that's something you got to think about. Qatar is another one. Very hard to get the passport. A lot of these are in the Gulf region. Uh, it's easy to get residency there, but it's very difficult to get, you know, the passport and citizenship. Uh, but Qatar is a good one as far as tax-wise. They do have a corporate income tax, uh, but it's real low. Um, and, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get the passport. So that, that, that's uh, uh, something. If you're looking to move there to get the passport, just cross that one off. But you are protected as far as extradition back to the U.S. and many other countries if you get residency there. Uh, let's look at some of the other ones here. St. Martin's is another one, and this is on the French side, not the Dutch side. And uh, this one actually surprised me because, uh, you know, being a uh, French overseas territory, I was really surprised and, uh, that they were on this list. Uh, 
And I've seen other lists before, but I've never seen them actually on this list. So it, it kind of surprised me when I saw this. Uh, but but it is a uh, you know uh, it is a French overseas territory, and uh, you know it's uh, it's right near Saint Kitts. You can almost see the the island from Saint Kitts. It's about 50 uh, miles if you want a straight line. All right, next one is um, is uh, Saudi Arabia. I would not go there. They've got real good tax laws. They're trying to open up and stuff, but I would be afraid to move there. Uh, and you would have to relinquish all your other passports if you did get uh, the second passport in Saudi Arabia, which I would advise you never to do that. Uh, you got bun bunches on here that you would not want to mess with. They got Somalia, Sudan, Syria. Now, here's a good one is Taiwan. And Taiwan does not have good tax laws, but it is a uh, very uh, uh, you know, up-to-date up country, uh, a lot of shopping. Uh, there are quite a few people that speak English there. And uh, you know, it's a first world country. It's not going to be like Somalia and Sudan and places like this. So, you know, that's another one. Uh, UAE, which is United Arab Emirates, is another one. Doesn't have, uh, they do have a corporate income tax, no income tax, uh, and no uh, corporate income tax if you're in the free zone area. So that's something you ought to look at there. Now, Vanuatu is another one. This is a fast track program. We, we actually do this program. Now, Vanuatu doesn't have the visa free travel you're going to get in St. Kitts. Uh, if I was you, though, if you're looking for a fast track program, I'd go with St. Kitts and Nevis. Visa free travel, a lot, lot better. If you're from places like the U.S. and Canada, it's a lot closer to be. And then if you want to get a second passport, then get one that's going to be several years down the road. Vanuatu is a fast track, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace that one for St. Kitts because the visa free travel is so bad. Uh, and it is a pure tax haven like St. Kitts is, but your visa free is, you know, and they do allow a dual citizenship, but, you know, the uh, visa free is the worst of all the fast track programs in the Caribbean. Vanuatu is even worse, okay? It's got less visa free travel than all the fast track programs in the Caribbean option. Uh, Vietnam is another one. Uh, Vietnam does tax worldwide income. Uh, you would have to relinquish your other passports to get it. You, also, you would have to have the language under your belt to get the passport, which I would advise people, you know, uh, uh, it's not a free country still. I mean, they've, they've tried to open up quite a bit to have somewhat of a capitalistic society, but it's still not totally free. So, I mean, that's something that I would be thinking about. But, I mean, it is an option if you're looking for a country that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, I, I would, if I had to pick that between a lot of these African countries, I, I would definitely pick, you know, uh, Vietnam. It's, uh, it does have a lot of benefits. You're single, a lot of beautiful women there in Vietnam, and uh, they like a lot of older Western guys. All right, now, let me go through one of the countries I was going to go through today with you, and uh, this is uh, the Congo. And uh, now, I know I'm going to hear a lot of people out there probably get pissed off when I... <laughs> when I start talking about the conduct Congo, but uh, you know, there are some benefits to this country, okay? Uh, remember, you know, we, we haven't done a video on this one before, but one thing I'm gonna tell you about the Congo, it doesn't have an extradition treaty with the US, and uh, you know, there are some, the labor laws there uh, are very lenient, and uh, uh, your GDP per capita is very low there, so if you wanted to, hire someone, uh, you could get incredibly cheap labor, okay? And you could actually have a business there and then leave and then have your company there. Uh, your labor is actually cheaper than it would be in the Philippines. But anyway, the Republic of uh, Congo is also called Congo uh, Brazzaville, uh, also called the Congo Republic. Uh, it's a country that's located on the western coast of Central Africa to the west of the Congo River. And it's bordered on the west by Gabon, and it's northwest by uh, Cameroon, and it's northeast by the Central African Republic. Now, in, in the uh, southeast by the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and then it's also uh, to the south of it is the Angolan uh, enclave of uh, Cabinda, and to the southwest of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the GDP per capita, this can kind of scare you off a little bit, but if you got a business, uh, it, it might attract you. The actual GDP per capita is only 600 U.S. dollars a year. It's one of the lowest GDP per capita 
but I, you will find people that are educated there, okay? And I get a lot of negative crap when I bring up African countries. Folks, there's positivity in every country out there. You just got to find it, okay? Now, the Democratic Republic of the Congo citizens have visa-free or visa-free arrival. The only 41 countries and territories ranking this as the 99th best passport in the world. So you definitely, you know, uh, if you're going to be relinquishing your U.S. or a major passport, uh, this should be a, a really a, a, a second passport after you give up that other citizenship, or a third if you're going to keep the first one, because uh, you're going to be very limited on your visa-free travel. But you know, it, uh, you know it, it is a place you can go and be protected, okay? Most countries don't have extradition treaties, uh, or, or Congo doesn't have an extradition treaty with most of these countries out here in the world. Now, they do have bad taxes. I will tell you that 40% individual income tax is a top tax bracket, 30% corporate income tax, uh, and then 16% for sales tax. Now, naturalization can be granted to uh, people who reside in the territory and, and uh, uh, have sufficient period of time to confirm they speak the language uh, uh, commonly in use in the country and uh, understand the customs and tradition of the society. General provisions are that the applicants have good character and contact and have no convictions or corruption of sex crimes, uh, not been uh, predicted uh, or participate in genocide, terrorism, treason, or war crimes, and uh, have resided in the country for at least seven years, okay? Now, notice that tax issues weren't in here, and there's a lot of criminal issues, probably they would take you too, okay? Uh, a lot lenient than other countries. Now, the acquisition uh, of nationality in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is restricted as it requires that applicants have performed distinguished service to the nation or uh, that naturalization will benefit the state. Now, applications must be approved by both the Council of Ministers and the National Assembly before being granted by the president upon approval, an applicant uh, must renounce their other nationality besides foreigners meeting their criteria, other persons who may be naturalized. Uh, now, let me give you an example of how you're gonna get this passport. Uh, obviously, you don't go in and you relinquish all your other passports. If you're gonna get it, what you might wanna do if you're thinking about relinquishing your other US citizenship, you could, um, you could actually, um, uh, dump your U.S. citizenship, get this passport, okay, and then you've given up your U.S. passport to get this one because you're going to have to relinquish all your other passports. Then after you get this passport, then get a St. Kitts and Nevis passport, and then because St. Kitts allows dual citizenship. This is an option you can go on. Uh, but folks, uh, you know, this is a, uh, every country has its advantages, okay? You can have a, a company here, and have you know maybe 90 percent lo uh, lower labor costs you don't have to live in the country just because you have a business there doesn't mean you have to live there anyway folks if you want to learn more on this we deal with this country other countries we get we deal with over a hundred different countries all over the world residency and fast track programs we still like st kitts the best it's got more visa free travel than any of the fast track programs uh, they have no income tax no capital gains tax no estate tax no inheritance tax uh, it is by far the golden standard if you want in a second passport. And if you want to know more on this, again, go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com, and ask for some help. And again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the right of your screen right here, and you get new videos automatically as they come out. And I would like to hear from you if you got a question or comment, just put it below, and I'll look forward to talking to you in the next video. Take care.